Okay, let's walk through filling in some tables, figuring out voltages and resistances and currents for a couple different scenarios. Each one of these tables is paired with an example one that is all the way filled out so you can check yourself. I've got the equations you're going to use right next to it and the circuit diagram right next to it. So you have all of your notes right here, nice and convenient. Everything is based on V equals IR. This little pyramid over here, this is something that a lot of people use. So you can say current is V over R or R is V over I or V is equal to IR. So that little triangle, if that helps you remember everything here. Okay, I'm going to zoom in and we're going to fill in one of these tables together. And I'm just going to do this little example table. Okay, so let's say that we have a series circuit. So this is where all the resistors are daisy chained together. We have one loop, only one current, and our total resistors are just going to add straight together. R1 plus R2 plus R3. One current through the whole thing. So there's, and the total voltage the voltage is going to get eaten up over these each of these resistors. So part of the voltage is going to get eaten up over the first resistor and then the second. And then if you add together all those voltage drops, you'll get out of it that original potential that was put into it. Okay, here we go. So we have three resistors and the voltage and we want to know what's the current through the loop and what is the voltage drop across each of those resistors. So we'll start with our resistor equation. Our total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And notice that I am not typing in these numbers. I am linking this equation to the cells. And that means later on I can change the values in the cell and it'll recalculate everything for me. So it'll do more than just one scenario here. Okay, so there's our total resistance, just adding those three together. Once we have our resistance, next let's calculate our current. So current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And for resistors in series, it's the same exact current through our entire circuit. Okay, there's no branches, no little streams shooting off. It's just one pipe, it's just one wire through the whole thing, one current. So it's the same through each of those resistors. And once we have current and resistor, now we can get the volts. E is for, let's see, electromotive force, I suppose. So volts equals current times resistance. So equals current times resistance. Does that make sense? How much voltage is eaten up over 500 ohms versus how much voltage is eaten up over 2500 ohms. Larger resistor eats up more voltage. Smaller resistor eats up less voltage. Here's the last one. V equals I times R. Okay, and the smallest resistor eats up the smallest amount of voltage. And at the very end, you can make sure you did it right by just saying V1 plus V2 plus V3, and all these voltages should add up to what went into it. So there, that's what went into it. Okay, what if we have, what if we start out with some different information given? So instead of being given our resistors, what if we are given a couple of the voltage drops, the current across the second resistor, and the total voltage? Would you be able to fill out the rest of the table if you start out with a different scenario? How should we start out? Well, for resistors added together in series, we know it's the same current through the whole thing. So let's just fill in that current, okay? The current through the whole thing is equal, so that makes that easy. How about the volts? All those volts have to add up to 9 9 volts, right? So I can say equals 9 minus this plus this. And again, I'm not typing in numbers. I'm getting everything with the cells so that later on I can change those values and it'll recalculate everything for me. 
Okay, so 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. If we have all of our voltages and all of our current, what is resistance? So R is equal to volts divided by our current. Volts divided by current. Okay, so there's our resistance. R equals V divided by I. R equals V divided by I. And at the very end, V divided by I. And there's actually another way. What if I add them together? 1 plus 2 plus 3, and they add together. So whether I calculate that total resistance from the total voltage and total current, or I just add all those resistors together, you get the same result either way. Okay, so that is resistors in series. Okay, the next scenario we're going to look at is resistors added in parallel. And I've got all of the notes for you right over here. So remember, for resistors in parallel, why do they say parallel? They're all parallel to one another, right? It looks like lines on them. Okay, so for parallel resistors, we have multiple currents going on. And we took those currents, what goes into it, that's what comes out of it. I1 plus I2 plus I3 is what goes into it. So there's those currents. V equals IR or I is equal to V divided by R. And that's where we got that weird way that the resistors add together, right? So when we're filling this table in, we're going to have to use this new equation for our resistors. So let's go ahead and head over here and put that resistor equation in. Maybe I should pull it over so you can see it here. Okay, so we have these three resistors, they're in parallel. What we're going to do is say equals 1 divided by, parenthesis, parenthesis, there's going to be a lot of parentheses in here, 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by, I'm just going to use my left arrow to get that R3 in there. Okay, make sure all your parentheses line up. We've got black parentheses and red parentheses to help us. The color coding on this kind of helps you keep track of this a little bit more. Okay, so there is our total resistance. What do you notice about this? Our 1 plus our 2, these are all 800 ohms, but then when we add them together, it's only 266. Why is the total resistance smaller than the individual resistors? Why would that be smaller? Think about that. Well, there's three different paths out of here, okay? So they don't add together like this. It actually makes it easier for the water to get out because it can go through door number one or two or three. Because it has three paths, it actually makes it easier to get out of there. So the overall total resistance in this case ends up being smaller. Okay, so here we go. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Do we have the same current through each of these guys? Well, in this case, we have all the same resistors. I should have changed this, so I'm not solving your pre-lab for you, huh? Let's change them all to 500 ohms. Okay, so we have three resistors. They're all the same. Look, there's a teeny total resistance on here. We have our current coming through here. What is the same for parallel? Remember what was the same for series? For series, it was the same current through the whole thing, but for parallel, everything on the top is wired together. Everything's wired to the top of that battery, or everything down here is wired to ground. So no matter what the resistor is, it's the same voltage drop across the whole thing. So we're going to fill in those voltages. This is what's constant for parallel. Parallel has constant voltages. Series has constant currents. Okay, so here's our current. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistor equals voltage divided by resistor equals voltage divided by resistor. Okay, so in this case, we have all the same currents. What if I changed one of these to like a 1,000 instead? What's that going to do? Well, if you have a bigger resistor, that means it is harder to get through. Harder to get through, nobody wants to go that way. Smaller current, okay? 
smaller current, bigger resistor. Here's 500. This is the path of least resistance. And so for this guy, we're going to have a larger group of electrons going the easy route, going the 500 route instead of the hard route, 1,000 route, fewer people going the harder way. OK, so there is the parallel. OK, the last scenario, I thought I'd throw one of these in here that's a little bit more complicated than just straight parallel or series. So this is a combination. We have R1 up here, and then 2 and 3 are parallel to one another. OK, so we have 2 that are parallel, and then R1 that's kind of floating around up there. For these guys, what we're going to do is try to simplify our circuit. So we're going to take 2 and 3, we're going to add those together, and find an equivalent circuit that would where R1 isn't changed and then these two guys are together and then it's almost like these two resistors are just in series. So 2 and 3 add in parallel and then this little group over here is going to add in series to R1. So this is how the resistors add. So we have R1 adding in series to these other two guys that are in parallel. And then we have our current coming in. Part of our voltage is going to get eaten up across this first resistor. So we have everything coming in, eats up across this first resistor. And then whatever is left over, that's going to go into 2 and 3. So everything's going to come into R1. It's going to eat up some of that potential. And then whatever voltage is left over, it's going to be the same voltage across 2 and 3. So let's fill this in for some scenario. So we'll have just 100, 200, 300 ohms for those three resistors on here. First thing to do, let's add those resistors together. So in this case, we have the first resistor. And he is added in series to these other guys which are in parallel to one another. So we're adding these in parallel to one another. Okay, watch those parentheses. Make sure you get that in there. So the first resistor added to these second two which are both parallel to one another. So that's the total resistance. Here's the total voltage coming into it. So here's our current. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And this is going to be the current going into the whole thing, OK? So before it's gone across this first resistor, and it's actually going through the first resistor before it gets split apart into R2 and R3. So here's the voltage. And this is the voltage that the first resistor eats up, OK? So V equals IR. So that's how much voltage. So it was 12 volts, and then 5 and a half get eaten over this first resistor. And then whatever's left over, that's what ends up going into these next two resistors. So we're just seeing how much is left over. And these two have the same voltage at top, OK? So this is it's the same wire across both of them. It's the same voltage across both of them. And then current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. OK. Who's going to have a larger current, 200 or 300 ohm resistors? What do you think? OK, larger current, smaller resistor. This is the easier route. Easier route has more people running through it. And if we add together the current in R2 and R3, what should we get? The current in R2 and R3, well, that's what's going into the whole thing, right? So the total current splits into R2 and R3. So there's that conservation law. So the, this total current splits apart into R2 and R3. OK, that's an overview. Excel tables are kind of nice for organizing this stuff, huh? Because after you're done, now you can go and mess around, right? What if that was 400? What if this was 250? And you can play with those resistor values and see how those currents change around. So if you want some specific current to go to something, right? You can see how to change your 
resistors to split off just the right amount of current that you need. So get all those equations in there and then play around with the voltage values, with the resistor values, and get a feel for how those currents are changing and how the resistor drops are changing and how everything in here is related to one another.